we find the Vatican City. It's a sovereign state. Just like London City is a sovereign state, just like Washington DC is a sovereign state. Washington DC is not part of the United States of America. It's totally, uh, it's totally independent. It's really sovereign. And what we see here in the in the sovereign state of Vatican City, we see the rings of Saturn. Those are the two circles, two semicircles to the side. Uh, and because it's Saint Peter Square, it's also a reference to the planet of Jupiter. So this this square uh, plus its buildings are honoring Jupiter and Saturn at the same time. Both are Antichrist instead of Christ. That's what we see here. Another name for Jupiter, uh, sorry, Saturn, is Kronos, ancient Greek name, Kronos. And the word crown comes from Kronos. So everybody who's wearing a crown and claims that they are doing that uh, with, with the permission of God, they are not having permission of God, they claim to have permission from Kronos, from Saturn, from the Antichrist, not from the real Christ, the true Christ. And also the word cross comes from Kronos. So when you worship the cross and you think that somebody died on that cross, then you have no clue. The cross is just a reference to Saturn. And we see that also in the symbol, the astrological symbol that's next to the cross of Saturn. There we see a cross in the top. And the cube, the black cube, we saw that before, is referring to Saturn. But when we open the black cube, suppose it's, it's made of carbon, uh, uh, it's like a box so you can, can open it, then we get this shape. Yeah, when we uh, transform a three-dimensional shape of a cube into a two-dimensional shape, then we get a kind of cross. That's the, the figure we see next to the black cross, the opened cross. And also the cross with a circle around it. It's also referring to Saturn, because the circle is referring to the rings of Saturn. So it's all about Kronos, it's all about Saturn, it's all about the Antichrist. Many people think they that the highest chakra, the, the crown chakra, that's where it's all about. Well, the crown chakra is of course referring to, to, to Kronos, to Saturn. And that's why there is a crown around the head here. But that's not the top. Yeah, it's, it's the top, but that's not the highest one. Because the highest one, that's of course the one in the middle. And when we activate our heart chakra, when we arrive, when we allow energies to come from the top to down, to our, uh, through the top of our head, and we also allow energies to come from bottom up, through our feet and through our uh, 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 rump, or through the, to the middle of our body, under, um, then both energies meet in the middle. And when we do that, then we in fact are able to bring all the energies to our own center. And then we become a light in ourselves. Then we become the light of the world. So the top chakra is not the highest one, not the, uh, the most important one. The most important one is the middle one, the heart chakra. And when we are able to emit light from our heart, then we become a sun ourselves. Then we become just like Jesus. Then we also become God's Son. Then we also become like the risen Savior. Because God's Son says, I am the light of the world. Who will follow me will not walk in the darkness, but will have a light, but will have the light of life. We can all have the light of life in our heart chakra when we are able to activate the energies and bring it to our center. Then we will be the light in the world. So that's something we can say to ourselves every morning when we do meditation. I am the light of the world. Because it's true. When we are able to activate our heart chakra and bring all the energies there, then we become a light. And we can truly say, I am the light of the world. Just like Jesus said. And Jesus is showing that every day again when we can see him through the clouds. So we are able to liberate ourselves from all the dogmas, from all the false ideas, from all the misleading concepts through knowledge. That is the aim of the School of the Holy Science, and that's the aim of also my website, pateo.nl. All the information you can find there, all the video presentations, all the e-books, all the articles, all the links I put there, they are all there so that we are able to liberate ourselves through knowledge. The truth will set us free. But we can only do it by doing our own investigation, our own research. Nobody can liberate another person. 
We can only liberate ourselves through knowledge. That is what we do, and that is what, that's what this webinar is about. That's what I hope to achieve today. I thank you all very much for attention, for visiting this webinar. And if you've liked it, please tell your friends about uh, the School of the Holy Science and the free webinars we are organized. Because it will not only be me, but also, also my colleagues who will put your webinars very soon. So thank you again for your attention. And if there are any questions uh, on the chat, I will have a look at them now and I will answer them shortly. Thank you very much again. Namaste. In the case. I see a question from uh, Jeff, living in Perth. He talks about the solfeggio frequencies. Um, I've studied it intensively, but to me the solfeggio frequencies are all about numbers. They are about number groups. So they are, to me they are not actual frequencies. It's about the number groups, and that's also coming back in the work of uh, Marco Rodin, but also in my work, because 1, 4 and 7, that's a number group. And 2, 5 and 8 is another number group. And the most important number group, the most special number group, is 396 or 369. So the solfeggio frequencies are just showing us nine different um, frequencies based on those three number groups. Uh, when you do the calculations with numero numerology, the multiplication tables for instance, then you also find those, those uh, number groups again. When you go to my ebook, Holy Science, there's a whole chapter about the numbers and the number groups. So, again, I don't think the Hofedra frequencies are actually frequencies, it's just a way to point our attention to the number groups. I hope that was clear, uh, Jock. <laughs> you really, really want to get the most out of this, uh, Jock. The prime quadruples, yeah, I also studied that. To me, that's, that's, that's not really showing anything. If you want to understand the rhythm of the primes, then go to my website, there you find a video where I explain, explain it. The prime, drop, the, the, the prime quadruples are just are not showing us anything. That's not, not helping us to understand it. The prime rhythm is, is uh, about the, the six directions. Again, we find the number six. If you want, send me an email, Joff, and, and I can send you the video where I explain it. But it's also in my books, also in the book, The Holy Science. I see something about um, Coral Castle and Victor. I think Victor is Victor Schauberger. And the Coral Castle was created by Edward Leeds Kalman. Both are on my website as, uh, as inspirational scientists. And I learned a lot from their work. So thanks for mentioning them. There's a question from Isba about black holes. Uh, to me, black hole is science fiction. The concept of black hole is just necessary uh, to keep the whole idea alive that that uh, gravitational force is the dominant force in the universe. Well, that kind of science is not true. Gravitational force is an effect from a magnet uh, from magnetic field. There are only two forces dominant in the universe. One is the electric force, and the other is the magnetic force. And um, Gravity is not a force by itself. So when we can understand that, and when you want to learn more about it, please type in 
in one of your search engines the electric universe you'll find a lot of information also on my website you can find links on that or videos um, but the electric universe that's to me is, is science and the whole theory of Einstein and Newton that is science fiction to me to me it's totally nonsense and there are many other scientists who have proven that the whole idea of, of black holes is nonsense it's BS being more precise Okay, yeah. This is the last question Question I want to answer because um, uh, otherwise we go too long. The crop circles. Another question from Jock from Perth. Um, I've heard from many people who have visited crop circles that they feel a kind of special energy. And, but I've never visited myself, so I really don't know. There's a lot of information, and I know of the work together with other people who study crop circles and find a lot of information in that. So, I, I, as I, I don't know where they come from, and since I don't know where they come from, uh, I don't have any, I don't put any, um, how to say it, I will not base my, my understanding of it. It's the same with channelings, I have no clue where the channelings come from, so to me they don't have any value, yeah, they have the same value as somebody else is telling me that, so it doesn't mean that it's more true because it is channeling, and the same is true for the crop circles. It's telling, it's giving us information, but when people say that, for instance, December 21, 2012, is in one of the crop circles, then it doesn't mean that that is the correct ending date of the Mayan calendar. To me, that is not no, not proof at all. It's just a claim from from the person or the whatever that created the crop circles. So it it, it can be inspiration inspirational, but it uh, it has nothing to do with with. Um, it, it doesn't have any more valid, valid <laughs> it's not more valid than any other things. Okay, Jeff, you have been talking with Janet. Yeah, I know Janet very well. You have to type another other S in her name, but that's that's just a misspelling. Um, some people claim that on March 22 there will be another earthquake because some people claim in one after exactly 188 days there will be a very big uh, earthquake. I did some investigation myself and I found that there are so many earthquakes each year, about uh, 20, 20 each year with a magnitude of 7 or higher and yeah, you can of course pick randomly uh, earthquakes and then find a rhythm but to me that is not real science, to me that is also a kind of uh, uh, how to lie with statistics so. but we'll see I predict that nothing big will happen in the coming days. There, no will be, there will not be a big earthquake 7 plus. Uh, if there is one, I will redo my investigations. Okay, yeah, I see that you have many, many, many more questions. Um, I suggest that for those of you who want to uh, have some kind of exchange with me, um, maybe it's good to do that through email, um, because this can go on very long and we'll uh, be busy. What I wanted to say today is, is uh, what I told in the webinar, and we, we are talking now about a lot of other subjects, so we can go on forever, but I don't see the point. Yeah, I don't know. Norma Iris Rivera, I don't know about uh, the pagans, I don't know what pagan means, so what do you mean by the pagans? If you can help me understand that, then I might be able to answer your question. Okay, that's what you mean. Um, to answer the question of Norma Iris Riviera, um, there is no such division between pagans and, 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 uh, and believers, uh, because the true understanding of everything, of God and the creation and, and all the, yeah, the dynamics in the universe is all about the stars. 
It's all about the planets. It's all about the visible lights. As above, so below. So, if you understand above, then you understand below. And the distinction between pagans and, and believers is, uh, is not really helping us. Because you have to understand in have to understand the true dynamics around us. I hope that's clear. So if we understand nature, including the planets, including the dynamics, including the forces of nature, being electricity and magnetism, then we understand everything. And then we can understand what God really is. God is just the interaction of energy. Or God is maybe the creator of that energy. <laughs> okay, I'll end here. Thank you, Hoi Kristen Oria. I will not talk about remote viewing. Uh, we, we, we go to a lot of side subjects. Again, you can always send me an email. If I'm able, I will answer your questions. So thank you very much. I'll stop talking. Bye-bye.